Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we are talking about how Tesla's autopilot works. We're in my Tesla Model 3. We're also going to be talking about whether or not it is worth the $5,000 charge that Tesla charges for autopilot. Now first of all a huge thank you to Audible for sponsoring this video. I will get more into that at the end of the video but know that there are relevant links in the video description. So let's talk about how this autopilot system works. Now all of the hardware is included on every Tesla so regardless of whether or not you actually buy uh, the software to be able to use autopilot all of the hardware is already installed on the car so there are eight cameras 12 ultrasonic sensors and a forward-facing radar all of which are used to kind of create a vision of what's going on around the car so it knows how to drive in the environment that it's in so there are three cameras facing forward there's a wide field of view a medium field of view and a narrow field of view and that kind of differentiates uh, with different speeds so at low speeds that wider view is more useful you can look at traffic lights things coming out from the sides things like that that medium range for you know those middle speeds as you get up to higher speeds like we are now driving on the highway it's of course going to want to look much further ahead and so that's what that narrow view forward facing camera is for on the fenders of the car you've got two cameras looking backwards so giving you side views of you know what's in your blind spot if you're to merge over uh, and then you also have two cameras on the B pillars looking forward so it's looking to those sides so for example if you know you're coming up and there's a merge lane on your right those cameras cameras will see the cars in that merge lane coming over onto the highway with you. So you've got those looking forward and to the side, you've got the two looking backward, and then you have finally the eighth camera is that rear facing camera. And so that's looking directly behind you. It's working not only for you parking for you to use, but also incorporated within the autopilot system. So eight cameras total, and there is some redundancy there. You've got some overlap going on in order to see everything that's going on around you. Next we have the forward facing radar, and so this is pretty cool because it can see when you can't see quite as well. So if there's heavy rain, snow, fog, dirt, dust, things like that in the air, then this radar can see through that to see the car ahead. It can also bounce that radar underneath the car that's in front of you and see what's in front of it. So you may not be able to see that there are, you know, two cars ahead of you, but the radar itself could detect whether or not there's actually a car in front of you. And if that car were to slam on the brakes, then it would be able to detect it before it saw the person in front of you slowing down on the brakes, assuming it sees that car ahead. Uh, so that's a cool thing about using that forward facing radar. And then finally there are the 12 ultrasonic sensors and so I think of these as kind of a defensive thing. So you know they're looking at a shorter range uh, but they're making sure you know no one is merging into your lane coming into you uh, for parking. They're helpful to see you know how close am I to objects around me. So if you're using the summon feature uh, that autopilot will eventually enable that enables you to you know bring the car to you and have it park itself then you know that feature is going to use those ultrasonic sensors to make sure it can go through tight spaces and fit in parking spots. So now let's just go through a demonstration of how the system actually operates. And so I think of it as there are three levels to it. So the first level, all you do is simply put that steering column stock down once and it enables uh, adaptive cruise control. It's just like, you know, adaptive cruise control and other models. So you can use this wheel right here. And if you spin that forward a slow amount, you can go up one at a time. If you do a big scroll on it, it'll go up five miles per hour. So that's just basic adaptive cruise control. You are still completely responsible for the steering it handles the accelerator pedal and the brake pedal so you know if you're in stop and go traffic it's going to accelerate come to a full stop accelerate come to a full stop and adjust its speed based on the traffic around you so if the car in front of you is doing 60 and you've got it set to 70 miles per hour you're only going to be doing 60 miles per hour as they get up to speed or if they get off the highway then the car will go back up to 70 miles per hour now the second level of this you'll see there's a little steering wheel right here and that indicator means i can turn on the active steering assist so if i push this stock down twice Twice. Now the car will actually do the steering for me. Now it says keep your hands on the wheel and it will yell at you if you take your hands off the wheel, but it is perfectly capable of steering the car all by itself. You can see that it sees all the different lanes here. It sees that there's multiple lanes and it keeps me within this lane. You can also see that it recognizes where other cars are around me. So it's going to steer, keep me centered in this lane. I don't actually have to touch the wheel from a can it handle it standpoint. I have to touch the wheel from a legal standpoint to make sure you know that I'm actually paying attention doing my due diligence and making sure that I don't crash into someone else. So it'll come up with that little warning there, apply light force to the steering wheel uh, if it sees that you're not doing it. Now I asked Tesla about this, uh, how, how long do I have to take my hands off the wheel before it will start yelling at me? 
And what they said is the system actually learns uh, how you drive. So if you take your hands off for a very long period of time, it's going to start to intervene more early next time based on your behavior. So if you're always keeping your hands on it and you're doing great, uh, you know, and then you take your hands off, it'll give you a little bit longer, assuming you're not doing that normally, uh, to give you that warning and say, hey, put your hands back on the wheel. So it does the steering for you. You just kind of put a little bit of light pressure on the wheel and, you know, then you just kind of relax, do your thing, pay attention, make sure nothing crazy happens. But as you can see here, you know, that truck just kind of cut in front of me, not too far away from me when it did it. The system recognizes, hey, that truck's going faster than you. The car doesn't actually need to slow down. It can recognize that speed difference and realize I don't have to actually have to slow down even though I'm very close to that vehicle. Now, the other cool feature of this level two, as I'm calling it, where you push the steering column down twice is the fact that it can change lanes for you. And so if you use the indicator stuck here, the turn signal, and say, I wanna go over to the right, so I'm gonna turn on that right turn signal, my hands are not on the steering wheel, and once it sees that it's available, it's gonna put the car over into this lane here, and then it will turn off my steering wheel, and there we go. So I just changed lanes there without even touching the wheel or the pedals at all. It turned off the indicator light for me that I was turning into this lane. Uh, I think that's pretty neat uh, that it can actually change turns or change lanes for you here. We'll do that one more time. Hands are off the wheel. It applied a light amount of braking force because it saw that vehicle right there was close. It then gets over, gets in this lane, turns off the turn signal, and maintains the speed we are at. Very cool. Now the third level of this autopilot is navigation based autopilot. And so what this does is if from a start you say, I'm going here and you plug it into the navigation, it will use that autopilot to help you out with your navigation. So if it sees that, for example, you're going to take a few exits on the highway, it will change lanes to get you ready for that exit on the highway. It will also, it can actually help you merge. It can help you get on the off ramp or the on ramp. Uh, so there are some features that it builds in. If you say, Hey, this is where I'm going to end up, then it will take that into consideration, make sure you're in the right lane to do so and kind of take out some of the stress of getting around on the highway, learning, you know, where do I need to be? What do I need to do in order to make this road trip happen? Now, finally, the question, is it worth it? So if you were to buy this with the car new, it costs $5,000. If you were to install it after the fact, after you buy it, it's now listed at $7,000. Now, I didn't actually buy it. I'm just running a free trial. So with a software update, it gave me a 30-day free trial to test it out, which I could buy it if I want to or I don't have to. Regardless, all of the hardware is there. So at any point in time, you can upgrade to it. Now, here's how I feel about it as far as the price of it. Is it worth it from a development standpoint? Is Tesla charging a fair price for what they're developing in the background behind the scenes? That I think so. I think they are, you know, providing, they're, they're putting so much into this autonomous driving. I mean, that's the end goal. The end goal is that the car totally drives itself. It's not just kind of this fancy cruise control. It's instead the car literally drives itself from point A to point B. You don't have to do anything. And so they're trying to develop that behind the scenes. And that has to be very expensive to do. There's all kinds, incredible numbers of variables that you have to take into consideration. Uh, you know, just reading street signs, uh, the safety aspects of it, the legal aspects of it, so many different variables that you have to consider when doing this, you know, uh, self-driving mode. And so that's the part where I think, you know, is Tesla charging a fair price? Sure. Is it worth it to me personally? And that's where the answer is no. And that's why I didn't buy it. Personally, I think, you know, this is fancy cruise control. It's basically a nicer version of adaptive cruise control. Now, if you don't opt for it, you only have regular cruise control. You don't have adaptive cruise control. You literally just have the speed-based cruise control. So you set it at 70 miles per hour and that's what it does. So it doesn't react to cars around you, that kind of thing. It won't steer for you. It won't change lanes for you. So if you do want any of those features, you do have to opt in for the, in, the total, you know, enhanced autopilot suite. Now there was a point where you could pay an additional fee ranging from about $3,000 to $5,000 for full self-driving capability. So that was on top of the enhanced autopilot. And Tesla is no longer listing that as an option when you buy the car. But essentially what that means is if there are hardware changes that need to be made to the vehicle in the future, future and you do purchase that enhanced autopilot full self-driving, then they will install those upgraded hardware items for free. You're not going to have to pay to get those things installed. And that may be, you know, computer software uh, or other things. So, you know, regulations are really going to determine what's allowed and what we can do with self-driving cars. 
And so that's another part of why, you know, to me, I'm not all that interested in paying for these features at this time, because we don't know what the regulations are going to be. We don't know what's going to happen in the future. And because of that, you know, we don't know when it could be that you could actually use these features. Now, does that mean that I don't think it's worth it for anyone in any one scenario? No, I, you know, I think the enhanced autopilot can make sense. If you're sitting in stop and go traffic every day and you want the car to do that work for you, that's a nice thing to kind of relieve some stress on your end. Still, of course, you have to pay attention, but the car is going to handle it. It's going to handle that stop and go traffic. Or if you're going on a long road trip and, you know, that can be kind of mentally draining constantly, you know, 100% paying attention, which you should do anyways. But what I'm saying is, you know, it can kind of remove some of the burden from you uh, from a mental stress level where, you know, you can just simply look ahead, the car is steering, you're paying attention, but you're not required to do all of the inputs. It's taking some of that control away from you and putting it into the vehicle. Now, let's say you do need to take over. Well, if you turn the steering wheel abruptly there, it will turn off the assisted steering. And if you tap the brake, it'll turn off both the assisted steering as well as the assisted accelerator and brake pedal. Now, I also do think the end goal is very cool. So while, you know, if I have to keep my hands on the steering wheel, it's not that awesome of a feature to me. In the future, the future goal of having it be completely autonomous, taking all of my responsibility out of it, if it means I can go on a road trip and not touch the steering wheel and I can do whatever I want in here, I do think that is very cool. So for me personally, I don't necessarily see the value in it in the way that I'm going to be using it. That said, you know, if you are going to be sitting in stop and go traffic or using it for road trips, I can see how it would be desirable to use. Now, on the topic of road trips, something which can help make these trips more enjoyable is Audible. Audible is a service that provides access to audiobooks, which can be great for long journeys on the highway. If you visit www.audible.com slash engineering explained or text engineering explained to 500 500, you'll have access to Audible for a 30 day trial and you'll get your first audiobook for free. One of my personal favorite authors is Michael Crichton, well known for his books like Jurassic Park. But why I really like the work he produced is that although it was fictional, it was always really well researched. If you haven't yet heard of Prey, it'd be a great audiobook to start with. It's about how nanoparticles escape in a Nevada laboratory in an experiment gone wrong, and these particles are programmed as a predator. Audible also has exclusive audio titles called Audible Originals, which can be found on Audible, and you'll get two originals included each month with your subscription. So if you'd like to give Audible a try, you can do so at www.audible.com slash engineering explained, or simply by texting engineering explained to 500 500. If you have any questions or comments, of course, feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching.